Good morning, everybody. It is like four o'clock in the morning here in Havasu. I just put some go juice in. Thank goodness that's coming down. Prices are dropping. We are getting ready to head over to Buckeye, Arizona. Got a little uh, project I wanted for a long time. Picking that up. And, uh, it's so enormous I needed to take the flatbed. Um, pretty cool. I'll take you guys along and show you what we're going to get. It's about, I don't know, 6.20 in the morning now. Got me a hot cup of Joe because it's freezing. This truck doesn't have a heater in it. It's like 45 degrees. Anyway, one of these days I might put a heater in it, but I only need it for like a month out of the year. So obviously this is the month, but, uh, we're heading to Buckeye. We're almost there. So another 40 minutes or so. And uh, we'll be showing you where we're going. It's pretty cool. You guys will like this. All right. We've arrived here at Western Pilot Service in Buckeye. And uh, we are about to... Uh, see what I came here for. Fort Hyden. So, uh, I'm at an undisclosed location in Mexico down here. But, uh, let's see what I came here for. I have wanted one of these radial engines for so long to put on a stand and fire up. Dude, this thing, is, this thing is rad. You got the Mac Daddy of them right now. <laughs> so, supercharged, 1,000 horsepower, 9-cylinder. Mm -hmm. 1,820 cubic inches. 1,820 cubic inches. That ought, to, that ought to make my day. We got to find a prop hub. We got to find an old band-up prop that we can nub off. Because I don't think these engines like to just run static. I think it's really hard on them actually to run static, but uh, the ignitions are all here. These are the magnetos. My buddy Steve Huff, he's getting the forklift and uh, he found me some starters, found me a couple of starters in the junk pile and uh, check this out. This is the carburetor. Look how big that thing is. That thing is just outrageous. This is the intake manifold. There's some spare magnetos. And uh, I believe this is the generator. Everything's 24 volt. Tested okay, good. I love that. Um, well, we just got to sweet talk him out of it. So, you rock tie down? here's my buddy. No, no, we don't tie nothing on. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, this is my buddy Steve Huff. And uh, we used to cause a little bit of trouble together back in the day. Back in the day. We um, Steve Huff taught me a lot about Cessna 170s and tail draggers. And uh, probably one of the best flying buddies I've ever been out with. Like... The guy, the guy knows how to do it. So um, he runs this program down here. So don't come in here looking for anything because they don't have anything to offer unless you are on fire. Nothing. And my faithful airport guard. So this is Ace. Ace the. He was born here on this airport. Really? Yes. So I, deli I delivered him. <laughs> did you, did you over, deliver him? Over in Portanga. Over yeah, there. And so now. what can you say about these motors, Steve? A uh, thousand horse. I believe this one's a Russian overhaul. 
So what does that mean? That, it was not on AN2. That means it's done right? It's, well... Because they're a Polish engine, right? It's not... Or they came in a Polish yeah. airplane. They actually, yeah, this one actually came off a Russian airplane, but it was uh, off an AN2, a biplane. But it's the same engine that goes on right. the Dromedeers, Polish Dromedeers. It's a copy of an 1820 uh, American-made motor. So something I didn't know about radials as I was studying on it years ago, they have to be an odd number of cylinders yes because yep, the seven. camshaft ring yeah they have to be seven, what nine. three five seven, seven nine, nine eleven yep. otherwise the camshaft ring doesn't come back into time yep to make the valve train work yeah now they make they make 14 cylinders okay. two sevens or 14 they make right. 28 cylinders well and then there's 24 too right the uh, wasp engines yes 28 the, yeah 28 yeah. Yeah. so yeah, that's that's uh, what four three sixty. Yeah, 40, and that's that's four rows, right? Four rows of yeah. seven cylinder. Yeah. So, uh, what do these planes use for fuel? What is the fuel consumption on takeoff? Uh, on takeoff, they can burn sixty-five gallons an hour on takeoff with a heavy load. Sixty-five yeah. gallons an hour <laughs> of a hundred low lead. Hundred low lead. Ten dollars a gallon. Yeah, <laughs> you're dropping a bucket. Come on. Yeah, yeah dropping yeah, the bucket. Dropping the bucket. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we probably won't be putting this thing on anything efficient that we're going to use, but um, we are going to get it running and fire it up. And uh, Steve has got me some pieces dug up here, so we're going to get all this stuff loaded up, and uh, I'll show you some pretty cool little airplanes they have here on their operation. I got a gift for you, Steve. Uh oh. You're gonna like this. You're gonna like this? Yeah, you're gonna really like this. So, uh, guy, guy dropped a toolbox oh. off the other day. Yeah. That was uh, from World War II. Yeah. This guy worked for a bunch of different aircraft oh. companies, and uh, you know, you're still Aren't collecting you? them plumb tools. I am. Look at that bad boy. Oh, that's a plumb oh, ratchet. That's awesome. Um. Wow. This uh, this breaker bar. But then this is like this is the good stuff here. Um, oh, I got a snap on ratchet. It's a lot newer than this, it don't look this way. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So every bit of this oh, is plumb. Oh, plumb. Oh, yeah, got the WF got the yeah, WF20. Wow. So there's a full set of these. Oh, damn. And I date coded the snap-on stuff that came with this. Uh-huh. None of it's chrome. It's all in this finish, and it was all 43 and 44 wow. and 45. Wow. But there's a full set of them, like, and then there's cool. there's almost a full set of the the small sockets. Oh. But yeah, this thing it's uh, oh, there's yeah. the oh, yeah. well this. So how I started doing this is a friend of mine down in Southern Arizona, David Miller, that owns a machine shop down there for years. Um, his dad, who lived here in Buckeye, okay. and worked for a welding shop, knew Old Man Plum. Oh, really? Back in the day. So and that's... Old Man Plum, supposedly, the story I got was he was from L.A. or somewhere in California, and he started making his own tools back in the day, and that, that's the story he told me. Interesting. Well, <laughs> this bag didn't really make it too well, but there's the 3 8 oh. ratchet. Oh. oh. Size is the one off when you have I brought you this just because you're your airplane <laughs> and I know it's vintage. Oh yeah. Um but it's a switchable Yankee yep. ratchet. Wow. Kind of cool. Yeah, I, they, so they make a ratchet that apparently only went to the military and it, it's it's between a quarter inch and three eighths. Okay, so dry. You you actually have one here. Well, I don't know that you have the ratchet, but I believe that's, these that's are right it's eleven thirty seconds. Yes. So I have the I have full. So I have the full snap-on set, and I've still got to go through the sockets. But there's going to be a handful of those plumb sockets that come your way. I didn't get a chance to go through that box, but it's 11:30 seconds aircraft, and it has the screwdriver blades, Phillips and regular. But yeah, it's military. It's it's World War II military. So yeah, pretty cool. But yeah, makes you feel kind of. Makes you kill find it slow to keep trying to stuff that ratchet in those sockets like oh, I know on, yeah when I saw the 11 30 seconds that was the first one I date coded and uh, there's a couple of these really little tiny wrenches here too 
Um, this is the teeniest, tiniest one. So that's plum. Wow. Yeah, so that'll uh, that'll fill some drawers in yes, your little will. your little plum toolbox. Wow. But yeah. Even oh, wow. even that. So that's the that's, that's the breaker bar for yeah. the eleven thirty seconds. Wow. See, I've got um, a breaker bar and a ratchet, uh, but it's bigger than that. So you have like two the longer sockets. one. I have like two sockets. Yeah. So you have the breaker bar that's like this version. I think so yeah. 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 So I found some of these even in Snap On. Really? Yeah. These slide ones like wow. this. They're uh, they're pretty wow. pretty yeah, unique, but yeah, they're T handle. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, so they had this because one of them was set up. It had this had on it, fast, right? Mm -hmm. system, Needs a little lube on it, ago. but uh, like basically it had the screwdriver end on it. End on it. So and, yeah, it was a T-handle yeah. screwdriver deal. Yeah. yeah. This, but yeah, this thing is literally full wow. of sockets. So I, it out. I was like, oh, cool, quarter-inch snap-on ratchet. I put the number in, and the number came back 11.30 seconds, and I'm like, nah. So I went and got an extension, and I'm like, well, I'll be damned. That is 11.30 seconds. I got a dial calipers. I'm measuring it, measuring it. I started researching it. Well, so then I found the date code on it, and when I put the date code in, it came back 1943. So then I stopped messing with all this. I'm like, I got to go through this. And then when I saw the plum, I was like, you know, I... Uh, I, I remember like, Steve was collecting this stuff. Yeah. I need to so, I sort it out. And the fact that it's aircraft, it's World War II, yeah, and you yeah. collect plum, it's like, yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. So awesome. well, as I come through more of it, there's still one more box I have yeah. to go through. I know there's probably going to be a little bit more. But, yeah, I think it's cool. Well, this is so, cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, yeah, if anybody out there has got any really cool plum tools, you can send them to Old School Garage, <laughs> and I'll make sure Steve gets them. He has a full box dedicated for these plum tools and he has some pretty cool stuff he's uh he's pretty pretty happy with this stuff so yeah that's half inch there was one here that i laughed at i was like that's definitely aircraft but uh it's i don't think it's this one but it's been ground on probably this one it's just like i don't know one of them it, it yeah may might still be in here but yeah it's all ground on no it's this one so Oh, <laughs> you know that's our. Oh, yeah. You know that's aircraft. I've got a that's, box. That's, that's, I've got a drawer, a section for special of drawer ground tool. That's their cut, bent, <laughs> welded ground. Yeah, that one they thinned that out pretty good. Yes, I was like, did. oh yeah, that that's one of them really hard to get yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. Let's go ahead and sacrifice. Pretty cool. That's where we sacrifice the Globemaster tools. Yes, the uh, those Chinesium. Guys. Yes. So what they use these big uh, ag airplanes for, they fill these hoppers full of fire retardant. And these are uh, spot on, on location fire bombers. They're, they target specific hot spots. Daredevils that fly them fly in and basically spot drop. So yeah, they're obviously rebuilding and annualing that airplane. These are the propellers, very expensive. Definitely, uh, definitely no shortage of fun stuff going on here in this hangar. But uh, yeah, Steve Huff, um, his uncle owns this operation. Steve and uh, his cousin basically manage operations here um, at Pilot Service, and uh, they do government contracts and firebomb year-round. So if you see these little red and white planes, you know who that is. My buddy Steve Huff and uh, his program. My family's been spraying for about 30 years. We just bought this, we bought the airport in 2012 and then sold Burl a piece of it in 2015. Been here ever since. But yeah, we've been spraying. We farmed here for, I'm seventh generation here. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So we're looking for old tools, spark plugs, anything he might have to make this, uh, nine-cylinder Russian radial, Polish-Russian radial, 
what Steve say? It was rebuilt in Russia, Russia yeah. but it's a Poland, Poland version. Well, what's this? This looks like expansive right here. Like yeah. ag, ag is nothing compared to that right there. I <laughs> that's see, a, that's I a see, class one car. I see cubic dollars. Yep. Yeah, like right there, right cubic there. dollars, cubic dollars, chrome only, TIG welded, heat treated. Jimco. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what's the engine that runs? Got an LS3 stroker over there sitting there for it. What, uh, what cube is it? It's a uh, 418. 418. Yeah. And it still ain't enough power. Not yet. <laughs> that's the way this, that's the way this racing goes, you know. So this thing is, uh, what, probably 100, 120 through the desert with? 135. Yeah, topping out topping 135. Out. Yeah, no joke. Like, can you imagine? Two-wheel drive, 135 miles an hour in this thing, just yeah just soaking it up you know launching off the seven eight nine ten footers yep. i can't even imagine but uh it's a wild ride we so, like living on the edge so you drive it yeah well so you you fucking get in a crop duster and fly under power lines at night yep. you live on the edge i don't give a shit this is nothing compared to fucking spraying a field yeah yeah this is pretty cool we just tore it all down and prepped it and got it all back together and was yeah, so so this goes on every season or when necessary. When necessary, yeah. Um, yeah, this is this is a lot of work. It's cool. Built like a brick sheet house. Okay, so we're back in here in the. Uh, how how old is this shop? Built in sixty eight. So this this is as old as I am. And I'm kind of old, yep. and it's way older than you because you're kind of young. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. So, yeah, I was born in 1969. So this thing was—I uh, was a year old. But look at this old Atlas lathe. This is a nice old machine. But anyway, this is some uh, some of the air parts that they use to uh, keep their ag wagons in the air. Of course, you guys. What do you got? What do you? What are your planes you use? They're uh, they're air tractors, yep. right? Yep. And that's. Uh, same thing as Steve's. Yep. Just so yeah, they they don't drop the fire retardant. They drop the fly retardant, kind of <laughs> rodent retardant, the bug retardant. Anyway, there is uh, a lot of cool stuff. I want to show you this box of gold right here. So that car we were just looking at. How much did you say this transmission was? Uh, to rebuild it, eighty five hundred bucks. Eighty five hundred dollars to rebuild it. So um, that part's not labor. <laughs> yeah, these are. Uh, like this is this is like like look at that shaft is just broke off and it was hollow so they can heat treat it all the way through and yeah it still managed it. and he wants more horsepower more horsepower so i see more breakage coming there but uh anyway we're looking for some tools to work on that old engine and uh it's just cool to walk through time like all these old antique parts and i mean some modern stuff that they use obviously filters for their their modern day planes so what does this master cylinder fit it's off of thrush airy thrush that's a crop discipline. thrush yeah. so my forklift has that same master it cylinder really? it does I, it's a, a 1955 clark forklift i wouldn't doubt it so yeah that's uh that's how that's how ancient some of this crop dusting stuff is i mean look at the avionics so these guys pull all this stuff out because you know it's obviously weight and a waste of time because you know what we don't need it at 12 foot if, above the ground if the hopper's not loading or the spray handle's not up you ain't making no money right that's why they call it the money handle the money handle yep. all right so yeah it's the same thing as uh running a oil truck in the oil field if the pump isn't turning it's costing you money here i'll give you a, a, a exact uh, so this is brake pads for an 802 right okay for an air tractor that brake pad right there is sixty five dollars sixty five dollars and there's and there's 20 of them on one wheel 20 20 around on one wheel around and so there's multiple discs yeah. right no it was one disc. it's a single two. disc there's four calipers so when these ag pilots come in and they're freaking stomping on the brakes now i was trained by an ag pilot i got my tailwheel endorsement from an ag pilot ron rounds he was my hero 
he crop dusted he had over 30,000 hours he ran an ag operation out of Blythe California okay. and he would slap me if I hit the brakes if I touched the brakes I could use them to turn around if I was sitting there to check to make sure no traffic was coming in before we took off but if I came in and landed and rolled up on them brakes it was bad now I know why because yep. this box right here is expensive yep. that's uh that's pretty crazy right there i love it so yeah you uh you wonder why your corn's expensive this is why so now we're up in the rafters here literally check out this floor this is world war ii aircraft landing mat locked and linked together is it even welded down? It's just sitting here. It's just sitting there. So we could like unfold this and go set it out in the field and land aircraft on it. Yeah, absolutely. All we need is about seven times this much, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, look at that. There's a cylinder. Yeah. Prop hub. All kinds of expensive red tag stuff. That's a hell of a stand. That won't fit you, but I think this one will. If I'm not mistaken. So what's this one? This is off a 1340. It's a Hamilton standard too, but it's a three-bladed for a bigger cubic inch motor. Oh, that's good. I think it'll fit your sink. Looks expensive. Yeah. It's probably about 40 grand to buy it. Forty thousand dollars. Probably ten to even rebuild it. It's 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 junk because the blades are, are too short. That's out of that's out of spec. So the blades have been rebuilt too many times. Yeah. Is that what makes them too short? Because yeah. they keep sharpening them and tuning them and yeah. tweaking them and bending them. And so you, I mean, the hub's still good, but you have to buy ten thousand dollars weight, you know, ten thousand dollars piece for the blade. right, yeah. and then reset it up, and it's yeah. just it's almost not even worth it. So look at these look at these old aircraft seats. These That's things are beautiful. yeah. These are uh, these bolted along the sides mm -hmm. for like the jumper. So you take all this out. And then you put a uh, spray tank in it. A spray tank. Hydraulic system for the pump. Is all this stuff out of the Huey? No, oh, that's Huey stuff. <laughs> so they gutted a Huey and turned it into a ag wagon, literally. So is this is this where you guys get training that's as pilot kids? Training right there. This is this is pilot training right here. <laughs> Notice how there's not too many wrecked. Like, you know, these these kids they uh, they definitely learn how to do it. You ever seen one of those? That's pretty ironic. No, what is it? That's the old, uh, it's old scale. Old Dylan scale. Oh, wow. Yeah, yep. it hangs up. Yep. That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That is really, really cool. That should be up in the office. Boyd Pierce would use that to weigh these 1340s off that. Oh, you got to tell me about this yellow airplane. Like, this is, uh... Serial number 64 Agcat. It was built in 1964. And uh, that's got a 985 on it, 450 horse. And this is 985 Pratt and Whitney. Pratt and Whitney. So uh, these were the original. These were the original. These original spray planes. And this spray was plane. your dad's airplane. Yep. yep. So yeah, look at this thing. It looks like a barn. This looks like the site of a barn. But uh, yeah, these things have some super lift capability. These old biplanes, they were, uh, they were definitely sprayers. Yep. Takes off at 90, flies at 100, and lands at a 90. <laughs> That's amazing. That is a brand new, uh, brand new engine. Yeah, brand new. Got, I think, 21 hours on it. Super cool. I mean, so is your dad still alive? Oh yeah. Yep. So uh, does he ever get in an airplane and spray? Not anymore. He's 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 getting to where he's getting smarter i think and he doesn't want to okay. get it. he flies still i mean he's he's an, he's an extra yeah. ex commercial pilot uh, yeah well pilots will fly till the day they die, they die yeah, yeah, yeah. They, i don't care yeah. you know who you are what, what, once you fly and you get bit by the bug you're done yeah it's over yeah. you're uh this was like his harley put it that way he wanted yeah. to come out here and fire this thing up and listen to it and fly it around a little bit it's super cool <laughs> it's super cool you guys have hung on to it and kept it together and even put a new motor on it yeah. like that's pretty cool yeah, we need to get in the shop, get it finished. We've got a couple other things to do to it. Yeah, I love it. Love seeing this old stuff. It's super cool to see it preserved and actually uh, people who actually care about it. That's the first tractor they bought right there. So that right there 
That pigeon. God, where's your 22? <laughs> Flying rats. That's it. Get off that tractor. That's the first tractor your family ever bought. So we're on the the cattle ranch portion of the, the farm. Well, there's a whole bunch of pigeons. We need a 12 gauge for that many pigeons. Oh, yeah. So when did your family start? So did they homestead this? They homesteaded this, yeah. Homesteaded this. What year? 1891. 1891. Yeah. That goes back a few generations. How many generations? So seven. Seven generations. Yeah. Yep. That's impressive. So we're going to go around here and we're going to look at some cool stuff. Like, yeah. And uh, some of it I may share with you. Some of it I won't share with you. Because then, you know, you'll know where this little honey hole is. What are them tubes right there? Those uh, those are old irrigation siphon pipes. Old. So old. they're asbestos those actually. Would, they're asbestos. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're laying there. You can't get rid of them. Yeah. So those would go in the ditches and siphon off the ditch. Yeah. Well, they actually had holes in the ditches back in the day that they would stick them in. And then that would siphon off into yep. the field. Into the field. They basically are different sizes, so they create the siphon. Yep. And then these are the new style ones up here. So those actually taper. The taper as yeah. they go together yeah. interesting yeah that's that's some old irrigation stuff these are the new ones there's an old uh jaeger air oh yeah look at that, that thing. thing's cool yeah that these are new style ones. skirt up for but sure they go over the ditches yeah so they just lay these on mm -hmm. start but same hand. same theory yeah, yeah you just you just hand prime them and then yep. uh same theory go out and rotate your water or whatever mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a couple of, there's some old looking ones that are installed right now. So how many had a cow? So what year do you think that was built? My granddad told me they, him and his dad built that in 30, 38. Yeah, because that, that timber is rough cut. That's yeah. that's hog cut timber. Yep. This was the shop before we built that one. Wow. Yep. That's pretty cool. And we grain our we, we mill our own feed here. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a grain mill right there. Yeah. That is. So do you grow your own grain? Yes we do. So one stop shop. You uh you 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 grow you plant your grain, you spray your grain, you you do, we do it all. We cut do, the middleman out. One hundred percent. Yeah. Family run. I can taste the cheeseburgers already. That is that is pretty awesome. That you have an operation that's that tight that maintains that. Yep. Yeah. This is cool. This is rolled corn, fresh from the rolled corn. Yep. So. This corn, this Taste, is feed. We eat this when we're kids. We come out and eat all this. Yeah, this is feed corn. So mm -hmm. um, when you roll it, it rolls at a certain moisture, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Good corn. So once it's rolled like this, then what happens to it? It gets fed. So we put it, we make a, we make a uh, feed ration. So we take certain pounds of this, Certain pounds of hay. Okay. This is a DDG. This is like the fine coming off of wheat and corn. It's real high in protein. Yeah, high protein. And that's molasses in that tank right there. This is like, uh, what the hell is that little hard cereal that you. Uh, grapes, grape nuts. Grape nuts, yeah. Grape yeah. nuts. Yeah. Um, so in a feed truck, we'll pull up here. We'll load them. So this is the molasses. Drop here. Molasses for the fat. Yep. And it all mixes it up in the feed truck and we go out and feed it. These guys get fed four times a day. So these are happy cows. Oh yeah. These are very happy cows because they get they get gourmet food gourmet made right food. here. They're all sitting right here looking at it going, yep, that mm -hmm. truck's coming around. You're gonna make us up a batch. Oh yeah. This is pretty cool. Yep. This is their steam tubes. The corn okay. rolls through yep. here in different kind of sections. And it gets steamed. 
So yeah. there's two big steel wheels right here that are driven, and it rolls through those steel wheels and gets crushed, and this is where it comes out at. Okay. We're down in here. How old is this mill? It's old. It was put in in the uh, 60s. We've been just keeping it running. And you guys rebuild it? And... Yep. Every year we shut it down and go through it. Replace what needs to be replaced. See, now that's why these farmers are so handy, because... <laughs> You know, you, you see you see a farmer like this that's almost 30 years old and he still has all his digits. <laughs> his daddy taught him well. Yeah. well 400 horse electric engines run these. Yeah, all three phase stuff. All three just, phase stuff, yeah. Man, yeah, that's uh, that's mm. pretty cool Digital right there. Room. Damn, look at the size of that compressor. Yeah, this is a control room. Okay. Power room. This, is a, this is what starts and stops everything right here. Got your boiler in here. Our water is super bad here, so we've got a right. Well, that's all of Arizona. Yeah, that's the mineral bad. mineral content's so high in the so water, high. so you boil the water off to it's warm in here. This is to pure, pure, purify it up a little. Well, we boil it off for the steam, right? And then we 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 pre treat it here in this other. That's a heating. It's not a called boiler. It's called a heat treatment. Okay. And uh, it, it gets all the hard elements yeah, out of calcium. It. And yeah. That, yeah. Just the, the, negative, the negative impurities that basically plug everything up. Yep. And it right. boilers up. That's why we do it. Yeah, because it. it'll it'll start road getting thicker and then yep. pretty soon, boom. Yeah, everything out of it. It's nice for this is the place. So to hang out this boiler, time. what pressure does it run? It's not like a not like a steam engine, but no, it, it gets two hundred PSI. Yeah. Most of it gets. It's not crazy. Yeah. Then you got uh, yeah, that thing's warm. It's actually going, and then this is uh, pulleys and parts and yeah. gears and chain, chain oh. sprockets and pillow block bearings and old new stock. Yeah, everything to keep this uh, mechanism out here running. Yep. It's pretty cool. It looks like uh, it hasn't been accessed for a day or two with the cobwebs. That's you know, good. That means good. it hasn't exactly. broke down, I right? Tell you, we, haven't, we haven't really broke down in a long time. That's um, good. Well, you know, like anything, once it becomes a well-oiled machine, it stays it's, going. Yeah, it's it's it becomes lower maintenance, right? Yep. 100%. It's when the young kids come up and they're like, "Yeah, let's push the throttle up on that a little bit." Next thing you know, it's like, "Yep, we're fixing chains today." Look at all these control panels. The 1200 amps of service out here. Yeah, I see this. 480 volts, two panels, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's uh. Plenty of electricity moving around in this little room. Yep. This is a pretty cool operation. I like it. Yep. Pretty rare that you see. Uh, you still see this. Stuff see families obviously. hanging on to this, you know. Yeah. And uh, cool. it's obvious the way you're describing it and telling me about it. You're uh, proud of where you come from and what you do here. So try to be. That's try that's pretty cool. This is where the corn comes. Everything gets fed into this. Right here. Okay. It goes to the shake separates the rocks and all the other bullets. Yeah. This is where your DVD and some of your other stuff comes from here. Right. Fines. Yeah. That's good feed. Pretty good feed. Yeah, I'd cook that up and make me some cornmeal and mm -hmm. uh, grits out of that. So. Yeah, pretty cool. Here in Arizona. Been here well over a hundred years. All right, I've came, I've saw, I've got more junk than I know what to do with. I've toured, I know more about Buckeye now than I knew about it before I got here this morning and it's pretty cool. Port, thank you for the hospitality. And uh, so this engine, there's like four of these engines over here port he was he was reserving this one for himself and he actually let go of it he'll probably end up taking one of them other junkers and doing something with it but uh this one was closer to being running and i appreciate that yeah, no problem and uh thanks for the spark plugs yep yep i really appreciate <laughs> it so yeah eat buckeye beef probably came off of port's farm yep, ranch yep yep so we're going to hit the road and uh, head for Havis. Well, we made it to Salome. Straps are still tight. It hasn't fallen off yet. 
like Steve said, I can't imagine what this would look like rolling down the interstate. Sure is a big old thing. Anyway, I'm going to grab a little snack here. And then uh, we're heading on uh, towards Abasu. Should be home by dark. Well, it's left about 4 a.m. It's probably about 4 now, about a 12 hour turnaround. Picked up the coolest thing that I have owned in a long time. Super excited to get this thing on a stand, trailer, however we're going to do it. Probably on a trailer, that way we can take it to car shows and uh, fire it up. All dressed up with nowhere to go. Dude. We're gonna have some fun. What do you think of that? We're gonna have some fun. Is that cool or what? Dude, that is beyond cool. <laughs> like, I bet your brain's been going a mile a minute since dude, you picked I don't this even thing know. up. I don't even know. Like, this that thing is cool. Is outrageous. That is cool. What goes here? That's the prop governor. Okay. We so, don't need no stinking governor. <laughs> well, so yeah, you can run it without the prop governor. You just have to plate that. Sure. And then get rid of this oil feed line. Okay. Do little weird things but yeah although just, it would be cool to have a blade that got thick you could pitch yeah yeah so uh, there's basically they have a prop governor down there and i could get one okay but uh i don't i think we for what we're doing ah yeah it's, gonna, it's, be, we're gonna, it's gonna be a feat to make it run look at this carburetor oh my goodness oh my goodness <laughs> is that crazy oh my what? goodness Boy, that'll suck a hickey on a fuel pump won't it 64 gallons a minute oh. i'm out full throttle <laughs> Wow. Yeah. What's that sucking sound? <laughs> it's your wallet pull coming. A, pull a vacuum on the yeah, jug was, that we use. I was just getting ready to test this spare magneto. It says good with strip holes, so we went through a lot of stuff. Yeah. Was, there was a lot of extra parts. It was pretty cool. But, That's awesome. Um, the guy next door, this kid, Port, he's a crop duster. Okay. He. Uh, what is that? that? That was his grandpa's ranch for the prop net. Oh, nice. So, yeah, he gave me oh, that. Oh, that's, that's so cool. cool. But, yeah, that's the intake and the carburetor. Wow, that's enormous. It goes up on top of the supercharger. Okay. And then uh, these are obviously <laughs> the motor mounts. Wow. And then I have two starters. Okay. Oh, wow. It, it's an inertia starter. Right. And Steve, Steve seems to think they're good. Okay. But, yeah, I'm thinking we'd strip all the tins off. Sure. Clean it up, make it, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah sexy looking but uh those magnetos i think are good so the deal was this was supposedly a running engine okay um it had a russian rebuild tag okay so they just you know put put a good engine on the plane and flew it and this was just a standby engine okay but uh polish engine is what it is all right um i don't have all the info but i'm polish engine that. rebuilt by russians love it yes love it Let's let's fly. That's right. right that's let's right. go fly. That's right. Let's fly with an overloaded airplane. That's right. Uh, two feet off the ground. Absolutely. <laughs> and spray crops. That's right. Um, that is beautiful. How big that is, man! Isn't big. that thing a monster? It is so cool. That's six foot tall, isn't it? Oh, at least like it's. <laughs> Steve sat it on the truck, and he's like, "What do you think?" I said, "I don't know what to think." I'm like, <laughs> "It's over the cab of the truck." It's like, so we got to find a propeller, huh? Well, so. Steve is looking for a hub, okay. and I guess there's a, I don't know if it's a 16-something. Port was saying a Pratt & Whitney hub will fit on it. Okay. And Port actually has one down there, Okay. but uh, he's going to check in, and I don't know, right. maybe he can clear and get don't, it for us. But out, Don't they time out? Or is it so what time? happens is, is they rebuild them, and they grind oh, them, okay. and he's got one that's overground. Perfect. It's, it's, it can't be rebuilt perfect. again. Perfect, perfect. Okay. The hub is good, but I guess the hub's not worth putting blades in because it's like $50,000 to do it. Like, it's it's stupid money. Well, the so, blades don't have to be certifiable well, either. 100%. Yeah, the, the, I was going to say. But it's perfect three-blade, and like yeah. we could hook a prop governor up exactly. on it and make it work. Exactly, so. absolutely. So, yeah, we have one spare mag. Um, I think those two mags will work. Okay. We have two starters. I did not get a generator. 
the generator's a ginormous thing too. Like it was another heavy. hundred pounds. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we don't yeah. need a generator. <laughs> it's twenty four volt on the starters. Okay. But yeah. Pretty cool that uh they actually had a carburetor. It was the only one they had in all five motors, so pretty Oh, so the starters are still electric. Yeah, they're, oh, that's they're inertia. Cool. That's cool though. But yeah, but they're electric so inertia. The motor, I'm serious, Jim, is yeah. like this big. Right. And they spin up. Yeah. Yeah. And then they thump. Yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. pull. Right. It's a mechanical. No, that's what I'm engagement. saying. Though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though, but they're still electric. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, 24 volt. We don't need no. We don't need to make shotgun shells or anything. No, 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 no craziness. <laughs> but uh, that's awesome. Yeah, pretty, pretty freaking stoked on having a radial engine like that. Is that is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> yep, beautiful day in Havasu. Got on the old Facebook Marketplace. My friend Larry, Scrapper Larry, he had this trailer down there selling it. Check this out. This is going to be perfect for our radial aircraft engine. I guess this was a pest control trailer. So it had a big water tank here and a pump up here and that was the hose reels. And then this was like a toolbox, like a fold up type toolbox. But anyway. Um, it's nice and heavy duty. It's got like 3,500 pound axles. It's got four. It's got four braking wheels or hubs. And uh, I think Brad said he's got some wheels that'll fit it. So yeah, we'll get get whacking on that and get that radial engine mounted up. That'll be pretty cool. Thanks for watching.